Mixing audio for video can be a very complicated task, and if you're new to audio workflows, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed by the powerful tools in our Adobe applications. Well, this is specifically why we developed the Essential Sound Panel, now available in Audition and Premiere Pro with a fresh UI that makes it easy to identify and perform key tasks for optimizing your audio. And the way that we've done this, the way that we've made it easy, is simply by dividing the audio that you have in your video projects into four specific commonly encountered types. Dialogue, music, sound effects, and ambience. So in this sequence, we have a bar scene where we have all four of those elements. Let's take a quick listen to this, unmixed, everything's been untreated at this point, just to kind of give you an idea of what it sounds like. And I'm just going to shuttle ahead around 11 seconds to begin. Let's take a listen. Hi, yeah, hi, uh, I'd like to get a drink. Uh, okay. Great, I'd like an elderberry. Oh, um, actually we don't have that. Okay, so as you can see, again, the levels are obviously not balanced, and the dialogue itself seems to vary at moments. The first guy, he's a bit louder, and then he goes a bit quiet. She's sort of quiet at the beginning and then gets a bit louder. So the first thing we want to do is assign those specific dialogue tracks as the audio type dialogue. So I'm going to expand track one here, which contains all of the bartender's dialogue. Let's go ahead and select all the clips in this track if we want to. And when I do that, you'll see that all the various audio types become illuminated inside the essential sound panel. So I'm going to go ahead and click on dialogue. And when I do that, now what it does is it reveals a whole series of effects and filters that you would commonly use to treat and process dialogue when mixing dialogue for video. Now right at the top of the panel here, you'll see a whole series of presets. And this is kind of a good way to just sort of hear and understand what each of those modules do. But I'm going to show you now how to do this manually, and you're going to find that it's very easy and very intuitive and simple to make your audio sound better very, very quickly. Now the first thing you'll typically want to do, particularly with dialogue, is take advantage of the loudness auto matching. And this is ideal to give you kind of a, the same starting point for all of the various dialogue in your video project. So let's go ahead and click auto match on this, and truly in a matter of seconds, it's done. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for that other gentleman, guy number two in the scene. All of his audio is contained here on track three. I'm going to select all of these assign this the dialogue type, click on auto match, and it's done. Now let's wind back to that same 11 second point, and you're simply going to hear now that both the bartender and guy number two, the, their dialogue is about the same loudness, and it's much more balanced just by doing a simple auto match. Let's take a quick listen. Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to get a drink, please. Uh, okay. Great. I'd like an elderberry liqueur. Oh, um... Actually, we don't have that. Okay, so again, very quickly, auto match makes everything your dialogue, and you'll find this also for sound effects and ambience and music, the same apparent loudness in a single click. Brilliant. All right, so now let's kind of focus on the bartender for a moment here. I'm going to once again select all of her clips, and I'm going to solo this because I'm selecting all of them because I want to treat them all the same. Now you can do this clip to clip, or you can do it across multiple clips, or a few clips here and a few clips there. You can choose how many you want to affect at the same time. It's very simple and very intuitive. And I noticed that on a lot of her clips, there seems to be a lot of, um, a lot of rumble and maybe some hum. And you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years, so let me just check on that for you. All right. Let's first turn on Reduce Rumble. And once again, you have a single slider here to control the amount of rumble. And at the same time, I'm also going to turn on the de-hum. Now I'm gonna turn this down a little bit to around, let's say, let's go to around 2.5 and maybe increase the rumble reduction just a little bit more. Now we could also reduce noise. I think some of that noise and room tone, that's going to work with sort of the ambient sound of the bar. I'm not too concerned with removing that, but we could if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and play this back and now take a listen. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years, so let me just check on that for you. So here's before without these two modules enabled. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years. And here it is with them re-enabled. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years, so let me just check on that for you. And you can see it already sounds better. And similarly, if we wanted to add 
additional noise reduction to this, we could do it here as well. And again, increase the amount of reduction simply by adjusting the slider. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years, so let me just check on that for you. Let's wind that back and hear it again. I was making some adjustments there. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years, so let me just check on that for you. So it already sounds better. Now, you might think, well, a single slider isn't enough control. Well, once again, as I mentioned, actually what it's doing here is that it's actually applying these effects non-destructively at the clip level. So if I were to click away and click on a single clip and go up to my effects controls, now you'll see the adaptive noise reduction, the FFT filter, which represents reduced rumble, and the D hummer are all accessible. All of the parameters are fully accessible directly right in front of you. And if we move the slider now, just while we're stopped, you can actually see that it's moving multiple parameters simultaneously. There's some real Adobe magic going on here. One other element that you'll find here is the de-esser for moving harsh sibilance and um, those harsh S sounds that sometimes can really be very sharp and ah, just really kind of ruin the whole piece of dialogue. The de-esser can take care of that. Now, in terms of clarity, bringing up the clarity of the dialogue. Guy number two here needs a little bit of love. So once again, I'm gonna select all of his clips and let's wind him back. And we just kind of wanna bring up some of the apparent uh, clarity by using a compressor or also known as a dynamics processor on this clip. Let's take a listen. Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to get a drink, please. Uh... Okay, so we're gonna wind this back. Uh... And I also hear a little bit of hum on there too. So let's turn on the D hummer. I think we can go a little less aggressive. Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to get a drink, please. Uh, okay, maybe even a little bit of uh, de-rumble on him as well. Leave it at five. Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to get a drink, please. And then, drink. let's go ahead and turn on Clarity Dynamics and increase this to, again, add a little bit more compression and really focus his voice. Hi, yeah, hi, uh, I'd like to get a drink, please. Uh, okay. Great, I'd like an elderberry liqueur. Oh, um, actually we don't have that. Okay, so again, on his voice now, we've applied a dynamics processor. And just as I mentioned before, if we select this single clip, now you'll actually see that it's added the dynamics processor here. And once again, as you move the slider, you might just be thinking, oh, it's just more compression, less compression. But no, it's actually reconfiguring the ratios. It's reconfiguring various settings inside the compressor intelligently, all the while keeping it clean and upfront without any sort of unwanted compression artifacts. So this is a wonderful addition to have inside Essential Sound and something that is truly essential to the mixing workflow. Now you also have EQ settings here, and again, lots of different presets to get started. And if you were to choose EQ, you'll see over here in the effects controls, that adds the 10 band graphic equalizer, where again, we have more presets for you to choose from, and you have more control if you want to sort of get into that manual state. You always have the single slider, which does it for you very, very quickly, and can probably get you most of the way there. So that's a quick look at sort of working with dialogue. Now we've also got that ambient sound in here. So let's go ahead and select the bar ambience, which is over here on track five. I'm going to select all of these. Let's go up to ambience and select that. Now, once again, you'll have your auto match setting here, and this is great for any kinds of sound effects or ambience or foley that you use, because undoubtedly they're always at different loudness levels. And a single click of auto match can match them all to the same apparent loudness. You also have reverb here. Now, what this is going to allow you to do is actually recreate an environment. Now, we don't wanna be outside here, but maybe we want this to be in sort of a larger room. This looks like a big bar. And this particular sound effect, it was kind of dry. So let's start with it fully dry, and then I'm going to play back and adjust the room ambience, and you'll see how it starts to just get a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. Let's go ahead and solo this and take a listen.
Okay, you can just hear it's a little bit more echoey, a little bit more ambient, and it kind of feels a bit more like what that bar probably sounds like, also from the perspective of where the cameras are on our characters. Now the last thing in here is stereo width, and this does just that. It just enhances the stereo effect, making that left and right a bit more extreme. Now you wanna be careful with this, but this can really widen up a track and kind of bring it a bit more to life. Let's take a listen again. And if you were listening there in headphones, you can really hear that when it was off, it almost sounded mono. It wasn't, it wasn't stereo, but when I turned it on, now this is a rather extreme setting, it was just very wide and very sort of vibrant and alive. So again, stereo width control accessible when you choose the ambience audio type on your audio when you're mixing here. Really cool, really easy to work with. Now the last element I'm going to show you is when dealing with music. And again, once again, we can choose our various music tracks here. Let's go ahead and select music. You have the auto match, absolutely essential because once again, most of your audio, your music especially, will be at different average loudness levels. And then you have the ability to adjust the actual target duration or length of the audio itself. Now this is a process that requires a quick render, but this will actually allow you the classic concept of fit to fill. So you can see right now that the audio is 1 minute 37 seconds and 19 frames. What if we needed this to be 1 24 or 23, what have you? Well, we can type in that time code and it automatically readjusts the audio by using a stretching algorithm to make it fit that exact duration. Now, if you wanted to actually dynamically recompose that music, you could do that by sending the entire project over to Audition. I'm gonna show you where to do that in just a moment. But very quickly, let's take a listen to what we've done just by setting a couple of different parameters in Essential Sound. I'm gonna go into my audio track mixer here, and I'll probably just make a couple of quick volume adjustments across the entire track to maybe adjust some of the ambience. But take a quick listen and you're going to see right now how much better and how much more balanced this audio already sounds in just a couple of minutes. Here we go. Hi, yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to get a drink, please. Uh, okay. Great. I'd like an elderberry liqueur. Oh, um, actually, we don't have that. Um, I've been here before, and I've definitely had it here, so you, you, you have that. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I've only been working here for five years, so let me just check on that for you. Thank you. That scene always makes me laugh. But you can see already, it just sounds so much better. And all I was doing right there was just adjusting some of the overall volume of the ambience, right? Real simple, real easy, and essential to your audio for video workflow. So my friends, that is the essential sound panel, the ability to identify different audio types, dialogue, music, sound effects, and ambience. By doing so, we reveal a series of presets as well as different effects and filters that will allow you to easily easily control and manipulate the sound. Again, with effects and filters specific to those mixed types, you can do all of your work here non-destructively. You always have access to the individual effects by going into the effects controls and selecting whatever clip it is that you've applied effects to to make changes. And then from the edit menu, if you wanted to complete and finish everything in Adobe Audition, you can simply go edit, edit in Adobe Audition sequence, and this will non-destructively send the entire sequence over to Audition to allow you to continue finishing there and actually export directly through Media Encoder. The Essential Sound Panel is something that everyone who's new to audio should check out. It is truly an essential part of your audio for video workflow.